SAVZ61, better known as the Scorpion. It's a Russian machine pistol. And uh, this is a semi automatic version. Uh, it's an American spec. The uh, receiver is made in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, that's what you're looking at right here. Uh, I'll be assembling six of these kits, actually, six more. I've already done three. Uh, and this is just the very beginning of this little series that I'm going to do. Um, this is all of your parts laid out. Now, your barrel, being so short, it is set up the way that this receiver is made. The back of it does not accept your buttstock. And that buttstock is this piece here. It's included with the kit. But the receiver, it has to be purchased separately from the kit, and the barrel is separate from the kit, usually. Sometimes the barrels come with kits. You'll find it in all different configurations. But um, since it's an American spec and you have to worry about all the rules and everything, the receiver is an American-made receiver, and it is made where it does not have the dovetail that you see right here machined into it. Now, there are ways of affixing that but if you do that if you put that buttstock on then you have to register it as a SBR a short barreled rifle it costs you two hundred dollars to pay for that tax stamp um, basically that is a physical stamp that you get from the government uh, you have to have the uh, sheriff or top law enforcement uh, of your area your county whatever uh, sign off on it and say that it's okay that you have this you send off and what in essence you're doing is you're turning your right to own that firearm into a privilege and you are then tracked that gun is tracked it is registered to you you cannot just sell it you have to they have to go through the same uh, jump through the same hoops in order to purchase that gun from you um, so you know there's a lot of things to it so most people I mean it's a it's a 32 ACP hardly any recoil at all so most people just uh, leave the butt stock off um, so anyways that's that's what you got here now these parts the way this kit comes I'm gonna move you guys over a little bit right over to here this is how the kits come and you'll see they're numbered and you've got all these different numbered kits here and it comes with a sheet sorry about my shadow there so anyways you've got in group one over here your barrel pin cocking points uh, ejector ejector pin bolt catch, bolt catch spring group two magazine stuff your hammer stop latches and everything group three trigger guard fixing plates group four trigger trigger pin sear insert lever lever disconnector and hammer it goes through all that stuff it's pretty well grouped together and five receiver pin your rear sight that type of stuff so that is your basically your breakdown and what I've done is just went ahead and got it all out here for y'all to see. And if anyone's curious, you've, you're not used to these kits, this goes inside of here. Now, you're going to see I'm going to do a full assembly video. This is what this is. This just attaches in there. Now, why is it shaped like that, machined like that? What is that about? I don't know. Uh, there, this, was, this is a disassembly tool. But I don't know why this piece, it looks very, very specific. It looks like a lot of effort went into designing this and machining this piece the way it is. I, I don't know. It seems like an awful lot of work to just run a bolt into your hand grip. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't know. 
but either way. I've done a few of these kits, um, and they turn out and they work pretty good. They're a little picky on the ammo that you run, and the reason that is, is because you look at this barrel, see your feed ramps on the barrel? Very, very strange feed ramps, especially in this area right here. That's, that's the bottom. That's your actual feed ramps right there. Uh, now, these barrels look better than the last barrels that I had. The last ones were not uh, darkened in color. They were stainless steel, and uh, this was a lot more of a an abrupt angle. Uh, these feed ramps are much better. I think these actually are real, authentic scorpion barrels. The other ones were not, um, but I don't know. Uh, there's, I did I did not order the stuff, and so I don't know all the specifics on it. It's my job to put it together. And test, of course. So, anyways, uh, that's what we've got. And here in a second, I guess you're going to start seeing the uh, assembly. You can see here where I've just cleaned up the the lands on this barrel. Just cleaned it up a little bit, and the receiver has been cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner. And I've taken a wire brush. If you have a, a small flex home, you could go in there, and you're not trying to hone it. You're just trying to clean it, and make sure that it doesn't have any burrs or anything like that in there. So, what I like to do. Some people may cringe, but on, on doing these, you've got your barrel here, and I was explaining to you how this is your feedlet. That's the bottom. Well, your bolt assembly, we're looking at the bottom here. That will, that fits in there like that. If you look at the bottom there, that will fit right in there. So what I do, I end up using this almost as a slide hammer to get the barrel sat, or sat, to get it seated into the front trunnion and get it aligned properly. So what I'll do is, you got your front trunnion down there, and you want your feed lips, your ramp on the bottom. You're just going to get it set in there, just try and... You know, by hand, you can adjust this, and if it doesn't want to spin, pick it up some and spin it, because as soon as you drop it down, it'll get tight again. So take it and just eyeball it to begin with. Get it where you're pretty straight, and kind of just barely pull it down to where it's straight, and you don't have to pull hard, just let it kind of sit down in there. Then you're going to take your entire bolt assembly and slide it right down in like you were assembling you're putting this part in now whenever you get this right down on there you'll see here let's move over just a hair so we can get in a little bit more light and maybe I can zoom in some for you Alright, right down there, pick this up, you want to align the bottom tang of your bolt here and get it to where it is completely right down the middle of the relief that is in the bottom of your feed lip there. So just like that right there. You see there net right now how it, we're kind of offset? So if I spin that just a hair and you just want to get that thing where it's exactly even you're going to use your bolt as your gauge let's see here
And I'm going to get it straight, and then I'll come back so you can see it in the next clip. All right. Now what we've got, if you look down in there, see your top notch? That top notch, you've got a line just on the other side, so the bottom of the receiver. The line is right down here. I'll get the bolt completely out of the way. And what you got down there, battery's about dead in this light. Come on, focus, focus. You've got that notch in the stamping there. It's actually this line right here. You can use it to help make sure that you're straight. And this bolt should notch right down on there. You're going to make sure that it is just even all the way around there. And then what I like to do is once you're certain that it is, that you're dealing with it even, I will take this and I will lift this bolt up and now that's going to drive it in there a good bit do it a little bit more we haven't pushed through there yet and I'm not pushing on this I'm just letting its own weight push it down I'm not doing anything that this gun's not going to go through to begin with just in the act of being fired you look here there's your first grommet and if you really want to get slick with it you can get your standoff here and get the most out of each one of your uh, that, that block is aluminum and this is a piece of brass and so by doing this we've got something more solid and substantial and we're really going to see that barrel get driven a good bit better. Now I have a press and I have all kinds of other options for doing this but this way there's no possibility as long as you have it straight to begin with of marring up the feed ramps and the barrel. The receiver, I mean your, your bolt, I mean it's, it's all made to go together anyways so why not do it this way? It's gonna keep it guided and straight uh, it just makes sense. You've got a built-in perfect slide hammer. And there it goes. I mean, it's just with every tap, it's going farther. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here to some more solid surface. There we go. I mean, you just can't beat it. It's... And then the point is, you can do this without having all kinds of equipment and everything. And if you get down and it doesn't seem to want to go any farther, and you know you're not home, what you can do is take your heat gun or your torch right around here in your front trunnion area and heat this. Do not heat the barrel. Keep the flame or the heat off the barrel. Heat this part. And that will expand it off of that barrel. 
if you do any heating or anything like that, another thing that you can try and do is before you install it for an hour or two, have your barrel in the freezer. And that will take care of what you need. One of the next things we've got to do is drill for the barrel pin. You can see the yellow in there and see down here at the bottom, that is the top of the barrel. That has got to be drilled out. Do not drill until you're certain that this barrel is seated all the way down. I just chucked this up in the press and took the brass and the aluminum here and I just ran the press straight down here onto the, actually I had my bolt in and I ran the press right down here on the back of the bolt and just gave it a little, just touched it just a little pressure just to make sure that it was in because if I can do this and knock that barrel down it doesn't take much pressure at all to seat it so I just a, a, like a half a pump once I was touched on it just to make sure There we go, real, real simple and easy. The drill bit I use, uh, you can use something, you know, right around uh, a, a 0 0.105, 0 0.100, 0 0.1, 10, somewhere in that area is what you're gonna be looking for. Go in there and I clean up right here on the edges because it's kind of flared, like this one you can see it's flared on this side. So I just take a file, clean the edges just a little bit. Don't really want to taper it, just want to clean them. And then I start this. I want to get it where it's straight. Get it where it's straight. I want to work on it. I'm going to see if I can get this pressed in with the press. There's a novel idea, right?
it stopped wanting to go in, so I stopped. I'm going to have to shim my press a little bit to get rid of some of this wobble. It went in farther that time. a little crooked. We'll check it and see where we're at here. I had to get it shimmed. Having that uh, piece of plastic underneath it was letting it move and sink a little bit too much. It was getting off angle. So I shimmed it with a couple of pieces of copper and brass. And now it's cruising right down there for me. Now what we see here, and then this is the side we were pushing from. So, what I'm going to do is set that down, and I'm going to see if I can run this metal down on this part and maybe uh, flatten out that little sharp edge that it's got.
worked just fine. Perfect. Something that I'm going to do, I'm going to take this ball bearing and use it to go right there to help me push that pin in just a little bit more. Since this is a damn bullet, pretty much, I'm going to put up a shield. And I believe that did exactly what we needed. Yes, sir. He pushed us in just a little bit, just enough. So now we're going to clean this all up. What I'm going to do here is I got this chucked up, and where that barrel pin sticks out a little bit and doesn't look good, we're going to clean it up. I'm going to just see, I may not have enough room here with the tail. No. Don't I'll have to rethink that.
there we go. Use some Formula 4440 Instant Gun Blue. Just use it on a Q-tip. Pretty much goes to town immediately. Go ahead and get the barrel. I'm just touching everything up here. All right, let's see there where I blued it. Now what I recommend you do is just take a little frog lube or some oil and rub on those spots. You can just do it with your hands um, and you'll be in good shape. I'm going to go with a little wicking grade. I've already put a little frog lube on there <clears throat> and that frog lube will help keep this wicking grade from sticking to everything. Put just a little wicking grade around the pin and even with the frog lube there, that wicking grade will get right down in there. and doesn't have to sit on there very long. So that'll get down in there and hold it good and tight. That's a German term. It's kind of like torque. Good and tight. For riveting our trigger guard, uh, what, we're, what, we, what we're gonna do here, trying to Again, I want to do this, at least this part, with something maybe you guys can do at home. And the way that it's got to go, you have your receiver and your trigger guard. That's going to fit right in there. And there's your rivet hole. I'll clip right up on there. And then you'll have this little rivet right there. And that sucker is going to go in there. Make sure that it falls in. And at this point, it's a good idea to put a piece of tape over that. little piece of tape over it. You see right down in there that rivet sticking up. So what I'm going to do here is take this and I'm going to slip this over it because you got to have something. You got to have a back plate. A bucking plate. Get that set up there. And by hooking this the way that I have I can turn it just a little bit and it'll keep that from being able to come out because of this. And I'm going to clamp that on. I'm going to grab another clamp because we're going to be putting pressure over here. Got our air hammer here and I've got the spring, the retention spring out of the way and our power turned down. This is just a flat tip. And you want to hold it straight up and down as much as possible. And you want to be easy with it, as easy as you can. I'm trying to get the right angle where you guys can still see, but I don't think that's going to be possible. I think I'm just going to have to do it. Yeah. Let me get the camera moved. Okay, now what I did, I changed it around just a little bit. And I have it shimmed right here to where, and it's actually on the front uh, lug. It's not on the magazine well, and it is brass. And I've got the receiver leveled up, and that way I know that I'm going to have a good head on it. Head on it down there. So now we'll go up this again. And try not to tear everything up. It's tricky stuff doing this, working with these, and you have to remove the retention spring because it gets in the way of the receiver.
All right. A little bit flatter than what I would prefer, but it's definitely going to be tight. Might have to refine that a little bit better. Um, you guys will see this, but no one else will ever really know. But that's okay. See where it slipped off? I got to refine this technique just a little bit. Um, but I'm going to double check and make sure it's all shored up and everything. And uh, then I'll uh, make sure there's no burrs and blew it. Importantly, that's what the back side of our rivet looks like. Of course, it's orange from the tractor weight, but that's all right. There we go. It's got a little frog loop caked in there. That's all right. And there's the inside. <laughs>